Gilchrist. I'm the executive director of the Museum of the Mountain Man. We're located in Pinedale, Wyoming. So the Mountain Man up here, there was a lot of ways. This was a very dangerous place to live. There was a lot of, lo of ways that these mountain men lost, lost their lives. Um, one of their most feared was a grizzly bear attack. Um, and one of the most famous is the attack on Hugh Glass. It happened in 1823 with a brigade of, of fur trappers. And Hugh Glass was out leading the the, the brigade, or it was ahead of the brigade hunting. He was attacked by a female grizzly bear that had two cubs, and she just about killed him, mauled him enough to kill him before the friends could get up and, and, and kill her. Um, but he was injured so bad that everybody thought he was going to die. And so after a couple days, they ended up leaving him because they couldn't, it was too dangerous to stay around. And um, he, but he ended up living Got two, went 200 miles to get brought back to Fort Kiowa and uh, then decided that he wanted revenge on those that left him. And he never did exact revenge on those, but he, he certainly went and found the guys who did it, one of which might have been Jim Bridger. We can't prove that, but it might have been the young Jim Bridger. who was 19 years old at the time. Uh, anyway, that's one of the most famous stories. A lot of men like Jed Smith. Jed Smith, only two weeks later, was attacked by a grizzly bear and tore his scalp off. Um, and so it was a very dangerous part for the mountain men. Um, but the recent movie, The Revenant, is based on the Hugh Glass story. They do a really good job of setting the stage for what happened, but they Hollywood changed the movie, so the story is a little bit different, but it's very entertaining. This is a buffalo hide teepee. It's 20 foot in diameter. It's the largest buffalo hide, authentically made buffalo hide teepee that's on display in the country. Uh, the reason we have it here is because in the 1820s and 30s, when the mountain men would have been here, they would have very much recognized this structure. This, the buffalo. Every every TV was made out of buffalo at the time. This one's actually from a later period, 1876, and it was a Sioux Warrior Society TV. The original is in the Smithsonian. It is so fragile they can't display it. So this is an exact copy made in the exact way, clear down to the stitch count of the of the sinew stitching. And it's configured as a kind of a warrior clubhouse. It is a warrior society TP, and that's what it was when it was taken in 1876. This is a warrior's battle shirt um, demonstrating his exploits during a battle. Uh, we know specifically what battle this was. This was the Uri part of the Uri battle with the Arikara in 1823. It was the first skirmish between um, the American military and the Western Indians. Um, what had happened is some of the mountain men had tried to go up the Missouri River and had been stopped by the Arikara Indians and so they, ba they, they went back downstream, picked up some military and picked up some Sioux allies who were enemies of the Arikara and they went back to attack the village. The Sioux were the first that went and attacked the village so this is showing what had happened. Over here we have the, uh, the Arikara village, they had a mound village along the Missouri River. Over here we have the keel boats of the military and the mountain men who are on the Missouri River water. In the middle, the guy right here is the guy who probably owned this shirt. He's been wounded, but he's still on his horse and he's fighting, and here's all his dead uh, foes over here. And so this shirt, this is again a replica, authentic made replica. The original is in a German museum in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, and again, it's one of those ones that's very fragile, so they don't display it all the time. Uh, but when we found out the connection to the mountain man and to the Indians and the natives, we decided we wanted a copy of that to be able to display.